If you own a PlayStation Vita TV, you're probably familiar with seeing this frustrating error message where Sony claims that X game can't be played on the hardware even though in almost all cases it should be able to. Several months ago, an exploit was found using the Vita's email application to trick the PlayStation TV into booting otherwise non-working games, but this process is cumbersome, requires outdated firmware, and doesn't even work half the time you attempt it. Luckily, there is now a much better solution than the email exploit, at least until Sony patches it. As of the recording of this video, the latest Vita firmware is 3.60. For those running this firmware, there is now an easy exploit that can get homebrew running and, by extension, make virtually the entire Vita library playable on the PlayStation TV regardless of if Sony officially allows it or not. Welcome to Henkaku, a web-based exploit for Vita firmware 3.60 that surpasses all prior exploits by installing an app called Mocular Shell. Once launched, this program allows remote access to the Vita's memory card file directory via FTP. In this tutorial video, I'll show you how to get Henkaku up and running. First, make sure your Vita is running official firmware 3.60, which is the current firmware as of the recording of this video. If you're watching this video in the future and Sony has a higher firmware than 3.60, then chances are installing anything higher than 3.60 will prevent Henkaku from running. Also check that your memory card has at least 10 megabytes of free space. You'll need this to install the exploit. Note that you need a memory card for this. The PlayStation TV's internal 1 gig storage cannot be accessed by Henkaku. So now that you know that you're running 3.60 and have enough space on your memory card, download Whitelister in the video description to your computer and unzip it somewhere easy to find like your desktop. Next, back on the PlayStation TV, go ahead and launch the Vita's web browser. In any search field, type in Henkaku. The first result is the one that you want. Launch the site. Here you'll see Kenkaku. This is the first ever homebrew enabler for PlayStation Vita and PlayStation Vita TV, akin to jailbreaking or rooting a smartphone. Scroll up to the top of the page and click the big orange button. You'll see a warning message that informs you that doing this will void your Vita's warranty. You have been warned. Proceed by clicking the install button. You'll see the Welcome to Henkaku message. Do not click on Stop JavaScript. Instead, click OK. You may encounter error C2128281. Obviously, make sure you never click on Report This Problem. Instead, if this happens, simply wait for the web browser to reach 100% and try again. If the same error shows up three times in a row, close the web browser and completely power cycle your Vita TV by completely turning it off, not just putting it into suspend mode. When your PlayStation TV is freshly booted up, try again. It might take a few tries, but eventually you'll see the Henkaku Mocular Shell installation page. At this point, Henkaku will auto-install, and after 6 seconds, the web browser will automatically crash. This is supposed to happen. Return to your live area, and you should see somewhere amongst your games the Mocular Shell bubble. This program will remain on your Vita until and unless you manually delete it, but Henkaku itself requires the website installation every time that the PlayStation TV is completely turned off. You don't need to worry if your PlayStation TV is simply in suspend mode. It's only when the PlayStation TV is completely turned off that you need to reinstall Henkaku via the website. So now that we have Mocular Shell installed, let's launch it. This simple little program shows the exact directories of the contents of your Vita's memory card. If you press select, you'll see the Vita TV's exact IP address and port number, which are the final digits after the colon. Write down the IP address and port number, leave your PlayStation TV on, don't enter suspend mode, and turn off your TV. The next step is to go to your computer. You'll need an FTP client. I use FileZilla, but you can use whatever you want. FileZilla is available for both PC and Mac, so it's very universal. Once your FTP client is installed on your computer, enter the Vita's IP address. Leave both the username and password blank, and hit connect. Assuming the Vita is on, Mocular Shell is launched, and you type the IP and port correctly, you'll be taken to the root directory of your Vita. Here, you'll see three master folders, App0, UR0, and UX0. Double-click on UX0. Scroll down to the bottom of the list, past Temp, User, and Video. Here is where you should put homebrew package files. Find the unzip whitelister 1.1.vbk from the video description earlier and drag it here. 
You will know it's successfully on your Vita memory card when you see the file in the FTP directory. Next, return to the PlayStation TV. Press circle to return to the main directory listing. Access UX0 and scroll down to the bottom of the list to find whitelister 1.1.vpk. Click it to install it. Next, exit the Mocular shell by pressing the PS button and then holding down circle. In amongst your game should be a bubble for whitelister. Once found, simply launch it. Almost as soon as it launches, it will seem to crash. Again, this is supposed to happen. But once it does happen, you should now be able to play nearly all Vita Pacific games that were previously inaccessible. This will still not work for PSP or PS1 games that were inaccessible, but it will work for the majority of Vita games. So now that your PlayStation Vita TV is hacked, what are the risks? Unlike exploits for some other devices, the good news here is there's almost no possibility installing Kenkaku can brick your system, and the results are temporary, so if you wanted to go back to stock, you only need to restart your system and delete Whitewasher and Mocular Shell. As for if Sony will ban people over this, uh, that remains to be seen. They theoretically could, so if you're someone who does a lot of online gaming with your Vita, you might want to seriously think about this, or else create a dummy PSN account. It is also important to note that Tenkaku does not provide pirated Vita, PSP, or PS1 games to be played at this point. While I'm sure that will eventually happen, the main reason to use Tenkaku is not piracy, but rather to play games you already legitimately own that should actually be played. No more seeing this annoying message for the majority of games. While this process does restore functionality for a great mini Vita games that were normally unplayable, it doesn't fix everything. There are still going to be a handful of Vita games that will refuse to boot. For these games, there is a more advanced technique that can be done to expand compatibility even further. Depending on how this video does and if there's demand, I might produce a second video showing off how to get those stragglers running as well. So thanks for watching guys, if you enjoyed this video please go ahead and click the like button and check out my other content as well. If you're new to my channel please subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.